G'day folks. Well, it's time for another installment of my Compressor Autopsy Trilogy. I've seen a lot of big compressors, hermetic ones. Now I've finally found myself a semi-hermetic that's complete. There's been plenty of carcasses over the years that have been picked for parts, but this one is complete. King valves are still shut. I don't know what's in it. I don't know how it failed. It's still got a bit of oil in it. Uh, I've just given it a quick wash because it was rather manky. came out of a supermarket um, cool room. Well, chiller pump room or whatever you call it. Don't know why it failed. Uh, there's a bit of black residue in the uh, discharge line, but I notice a lot of old compressors get that anyway from wear and tear. Uh, yeah, I'm going to start electrically testing it and then uh, move on to mechanical. This one has a uh, built-in oil pump like they usually do. It's a pressure-fed oil system. Um, yeah. Oh, by the way, this one's made by Bitzer. I believe it's pronounced Bitzer. It might be or might not. Uh, it's a German-built unit. V4 cylinder. One, two, three, four. And it's probably got roughly 20 horsepower electric motor. Not too sure on that one. I'll hoist it up onto the table and we'll work from there. But that's the oil pump. And a YouTuber asked me what it, what, what it means when their supermarket compressor is throwing up a low oil pressure alert. And it basically means this pump's not working properly. So if your system's throwing up a pressure alert like that, shut it down. Take the unit offline and just transfer food to another display case or something until the system can be repaired. No use running it after the uh, oil alerts come up because you just wreck your compressor. So catch it early. Yeah, I'm getting the damn cold that everyone's been getting lately. Not fun. I just thought I'd get this thing off the trail and out of the way while I can. I'll do a bit of electrical testing tonight and that'll be it. I'll pull it apart later in the week. Okay, now on with the troubleshooting. Uh, just for the record, this one's a Bitza 4J-13.2Y. Um, yeah, made in Germany, obviously. Bitza Cool Machine Bow. I'm guessing that means cool machine makers. Or re refrigeration machine makers. Um, what is it? 380 to 420 volts or 440 to 480 volts, 60 hertz. Uh, top one's 50 hertz, 27 amps, normal, nominal running current, 81 amps, locked rotor current in direct on uh, star configuration or star star, I think that's using delta or star relays, 132 amps. Um, 63.5 cubic meters per hour of compressed refrigerant, 1450 motor RPM. That's on 50 hertz anyway. It's a dual spec motor. It'll run on 50 or 60 hertz. Uh, this terminal box isn't from this compressor. This is from another bit that I dismantled a couple of years ago. Uh, there was two of them at the scrapyard, missing cylinder heads and other bits and pieces. Oil pump and other shit. So I didn't bother doing a video on it. Now I've got a complete one, I can do a proper video. But the box is off a slightly smaller compressor. Even the shade of paint is slightly different. But the wiring's the same. 
uh, just for reference purposes I've just drawn this on the cover if you want to run a motor on 220 volt 3 phase in Australia you can wire it in Delta and use a 240 volt BFD but if you're running it on 3 phase you can wire it in Star which is with the bridges across the terminals like I've done here and that's uh, 415 volt Delta is when you take the um, little bridging plate and go across one side of the terminals which is the U, B and W one or no, it depends on the terminal block you'll find that one's T1, T2 and T3 on most motors and they'll, they'll be your inputs and the opposite side you bridge across with your uh, little joining plates but yeah I've done some poking around with the multimeter anyway and this one here which is quite obviously discoloured around the terminal block this motor, the first winding has been overloading for a while it's not short to ground nothing's short to ground but this one here is very crook the bolt's discoloured and rusted and even the brass terminal's got some discoloration on it so she's gotten pretty hot but these two here seem to be within tolerance they're roughly 1.8 ohms so since we're not short to earth, let's put some power to it. Alright, let's do a power test. Get the tripod set up. I'm going to control this from the main panel so that can stay on. Alright, 25 amp breaker, let's see what we can get. Ooh, 90, 80. 80 amps. A little 50 amp meters just maxing itself out. <laughs> Funny how the lights seem like that. Yeah, it's not happy. That's it. That's just using the two good windings. Let's put the uh, start wire to the uh, bad winding. All right, we're all hooked up. Now remember, this is inductive load. So the amps are going to be, go pretty high before anything trips. Whereas with a short circuit load, then that brake will trip before 20 amps, I guarantee it. There's a bit of a difference between a short, which is a harmful to everything because current just goes through the roof and tries to pull unlimited current from the line, versus an inductive load like this, where it will take a while for the brake to trip. Nearly 100 amps. There we go. That's inductive load. It takes a few seconds, but the breaker will go off. Let's turn the auxiliary back on. Oh, that was fun. It's not going to achieve rotation. No way. Not with half-fried windings, but that was fun. Next step's to pull it to bits, but I'll do that later in the week. This damn head cold's getting really bad. It's just that time of the year, I suppose freezing cold out here. But that's a uh, Pizza V4 semi-hermetic compressor awaiting disassembly. Since it's probably mechanically alright I'll try and drive it using a uh, belt drive but if I recall correctly the rotor ends about here so I'm going to have to make an extension and try and bolt it on. But there is a 16mm bolt in there. I've got a spare crankshaft and pistons from one of these. In my collection of display bits, this is a spare piston and crank assembly. The uh, rotor just bolts on. It's a nice heavy duty one. Got most of the rings there. I think I pinched one for a lawnmower engine one day. Oh well, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more on this one. It's going to be fun.